Number one has us finding the volume of a pyramid whose um, base is a square with side lengths of six, and then we've got a height of eight. So we've got this base here, that's a six by six square. So we can figure out the base area by doing six times six, which gives us 36. So remember when we're using a pyramid, our volume is area of the base times the height divided by three. So now we know that the area of the base is 36. They gave us the height of the pyramid is eight, and then we'll divide by three. So multiply um, 36 times eight divided by three, and you get 96 units cubed for that volume. Number two gives us a cylinder with a radius of nine inches and a height of 15. Then they say we also have a cone that has the same radius and height. Find the volume of the cylinder and then find the volume of the cone. So both of these are gonna have the same base area um, because both bases are a circle of radius nine. So remember to find area of a circle, we do pi times the radius squared. So our base area is 81 pi. Then they also give us our height of 15. So to find the volume of a cylinder, we just do base times height. So we'll be doing 81 pi times 15. And I'm not gonna multiply the pi out, I'm just gonna leave it. So 81 times 15, gives me 1,215 and then pi inches cubed for that volume. So now for a cone, a cone is just gonna be area of the base times the height divided by three. Well, we've already found the area of the base times the height, that's the volume of the cylinder. So all we have left to do is just divide this by three and that will be the volume of our cone, which is 405 pi inches cubed. So then how much or what fraction of the cylinder's volume is the cone? So the cone is one third of the cylinder's volume. Number three, each image has a height of four units and then has base areas that are eight. So this base area is eight, this base area is eight. Then we see this cross section created here from a scale factor um, of 0.25. And it wants us to find the areas of these. So to find the area given a dilation, you would multiply by K squared. So we're just gonna take the base area eight and multiply it by 0 0.25 squared. And that's gonna give us our new area of 0 0.5 units squared. That's gonna happen in both of these since both of these have a base area of eight. So this one's gonna be 0.5 units squared as well. So in this next one asks us, suppose a new cross section was created in each solid, both at the same height, using the same scale factor. How would the areas of the two cross sections um, compare, explain your reasoning? So they're gonna be equal, because in both cases, you're gonna take eight times whatever the scale factor is squared. So each of the new areas is gonna be eight times K squared. Number four, select the most specific and accurate name um, for the solid shown. So hopefully you see um, that we have two triangles here and that's where our parallel cross sections are coming from. So we could just move this parallel to itself to create this whole shape. And so these are our base shapes. We've got two of them, so it has to be a prism. It's not a pyramid. And then the base shape is a triangle, so it's a right triangular prism. 
Number five, a solid can be constructed with four triangles and one rectangle. What's the name of this solid? So if we only have one of one of the shapes, that has to be our base. So our base is a rectangle. Then all of the sides are making triangles. So we've got four triangles coming out of every side. So they're going to connect at a point and create a pyramid. The base shape of this pyramid is a rectangle. So it's a rectangular pyramid. Um, number six, find the volume produced by rotating this two-dimensional shape around the axis shown. Um, so if we rotate this shape, kind of our outer, um, we're going to get two cylinders, right? So we're going to rotate this around. It's going to create a cylinder here um, with a radius. So this outer radius is going to be three. And then we see that we've got this, whoops, that we've got this cylinder here. Then there's also going to be a cylinder in the middle that's going to be hollow. So we're also going to need to um, calculate that. So we'll have this little cylinder in here created, and this one's going to be hollow. So we'll want to calculate the larger cylinder volume and then subtract out this inner cylinder. So let's go ahead and find the volume of each of those and then we'll subtract them. So volume equals area of the base times the height. So remember that the radius of this um, blue cylinder okay, is three. So it's three into the axis. So 3 squared is 9 times pi will be our base area. Then this height here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the distance between those two circles. So the volume of this blue cylinder is 54 pi. Then we'll go to find um, the volume of this inner cylinder. Okay, that cylinder has a radius of 1. So the volume here, 1 squared is 1. So we have 1 pi times, and this is the same height of 6. So this volume is 6 pi. So then when we go to find um, the volume of just the solid, we'll subtract these. So then our volume is going to be 54 pi minus 6 pi, which is 48 pi um, units cubed. Number seven, the this zigzag crystal vase has a height of 20 centimeters um, and the cross sections parallel to the base are always rectangles. So there's kind of this like rectangular opening here um, and the rectangles are six by 12 centimeters. If we assume the crystal itself has no thickness, what would the volume be? So this is, we're just going to calculate the volume um, just with these dimensions. So remember, volume is equal to area of the base times the height. Our base area here is 6 times 12 for that rectangle, and the height is 20. So when we multiply all of this out, so 6 times 12 times 20, we're going to get 1,440 centimeters cubed. So if that glass had no thickness, this is the volume of the vase. Then in part B, it says the crystal is actually one centimeter thick on each of the sides and on the bottom. Approximately how much space is contained within the vase? Okay, so how much volume is in there not including the um, glass. So in order to do this, we got to think about um, the new dimensions of the rectangle. So it started as 6 by 12, but now it's coming in on either side by a centimeter. Okay, so now we're taking a centimeter of width off because of that um, the, the glass thickness. Okay, so this is caved, or it's in one centimeter here and one centimeter here. So we're taking six and minusing two to get 
to get a new dimension of four here. And then same for the 12, we're one centimeter in on either side. So this length here is actually 10. Then this also happens on the um, base of, this, of the vase. So if we kind of just make a really simple drawing of this vase, okay, the base is also taken in um, one centimeter or has a thickness of one centimeter. So this originally was 20. This part in here then, okay, is going to be 19 because we're up one centimeter from the base. So then we'll calculate our new volume. Again, area of the base times the height, but now our base dimensions are 4 and 10, and then our height is 19. So the volume now, if we take into consideration the thickness of the glass, would only be 760 centimeters cubed. All right, then number eight, a trapezoid has an area of 10 square units. So we've got an area of 10 square units. What scale factor would be required to dilate it to have a new area of 90? And then remember when we're doing area, scale factors are going to, when we compare areas, they're going to give us back a K squared. So we'll do new area over original area, and that's going to equal our k squared. So our new area is 90 over our original area is 10, and 90 divided by 10 is 9. That's our k squared. So then when we square root that, we'll get our scale factor um, of 3.